Hello and welcome to Friday Night Overtime, week number four in Georgia, week number three in the state of Florida. I am sports director Allison Posey. That guy over there, he is our own Dom Tibbetts, and we have a full slate of high school football games to get to tonight. Yeah. He has all the dance moves. Too. Yeah, we sure do, baby. I know. I'm boogie. That's what I do. And when it comes to the game and pride played and passion, look no further than the Soul Bowl. Rick Erds hosting Gadsden County. It's our Friday Night Overtime Game of the Week. The cheerleaders working hard tonight. We are going to hear from them a little bit later. Raiders down 10 in the second quarter. Kevin Baker taking the handoff, picks up about 15 yards. Speed and burst. Puts the Raiders within five of that goal line. Michael Townsend working hard for the Raiders. Fakes the handoff. He's in for six. There it's a goes. three point ball game, 24 21 after the extra point. Gadsden County firing right back though. Cameron Upshaw on the keeper around to the outside, takes it about to the five yard line before he's pushed out of bounds. And then he'll finish the job. The other direction this time, Upshaw in for the score. It's a nine-point game, 30-21. to 21. That's your halftime score. Second half action late in the third quarter. The Jags putting a little more room between the two. John Terry is Thomas. Whoa. He is out of here. 45 yards to the crib. Jags go up 15, 36-21. to 21. But, you, but you want to know something? Don't knock the fight in records. They come back to win what? scoring 22 what? unanswered. 43 to 36, your final. Winners of the Soul Bowl. A rivalry between two private schools, St. John Paul II hosting McClay. Scoring early. Here we go. Hand off to Jaden Walden, taking it 50 yards to the house. There he goes. Look at the speed. See ya. Put it in my rear view mirror, sir. The extra point is blocked, so it's 6 0. JP2 early. Marauder struggling really to get their offense going, but JP2 make things happen thanks to catches like this. Jermaine Ooh, Hughes, week, the toss week. to Terrell Copeland. Someone make the grab. PAT is good. It's 13 0. Panthers, they go on to win big. 53 to 31, your final. The Madison County Cowboys coming off a bye week at Perennial Power. University Christian tonight. Madison County leading 12 to 8 during the second quarter. Madison's Jamie Hampton breaking the long touchdown. Oh, he gone. Run. And, bye bye. Uh, yeah, that might be a play of the week nominee too. See, throwing up the deuces too. You like that? Final play Love of the it. half here. You see, trying to make a play, picked off by Madison. There's that defense too. Cowboys get the big win over UC tonight, 28 to 14. They should have just went to halftime. AP. They should have just done it. Now Lincoln also in the 904 facing Bartram Trail. Early on, things look good for the Bears as they went in with the trickery. Eric Weatherly usually runs him in, but this time he's passing. Taylor Rhodes. Bears lead 10 nothing, but Lincoln's. Perry Fisher gets the Trojans in the end zone. They'll lead 14 to 10. Lincoln would rally in the fourth quarter and take this one late as Bartram Trail loses for the first time this season. 37 31 Lincoln, your final. Okay, Trojans, I see you. The Childs Timberwolves headed west on I 10 instead of east at Choctaw tonight. Opening kickoff. Childs kicks to Cole Tab, and you probably shouldn't have kicked to this guy. He's really that fast, too. You know that? Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah, his 40 time is sub three, I heard. There you go. 96 yard kickoff return to open things up. It's 7 0. Childs, Trent Hartung here, wide open to Jimmy Mabry, but Mabry bobbles and he can't hold on to it. And he is not happy with himself. Not so fast, my friends, though. The officials say he hung on long enough. All right. Okay. Crossing the goal line for the score. It's 7 7. Choctaw, though, they win it 31 7. The Lowndes Vikings, one of the top teams in 7A football in Georgia. A big game tonight on the road facing Lee County on top. One of the best teams in 6A football. And look who we have here showing up to the game in a helicopter. Okay, Ladies and gentlemen, coach. that's Mike Norvell, Florida okay. State head football coach, arriving in style for some recruiting tonight. <laughs> we'll see if he has any more room. Lee County back inside the red zone, and Christopher Martin hands it off to Osomi Cromra. Happy feet. He jukes a defender, extends his body, and extends a lead. Trojan touchdown. It's 10 0 Lee County to the second quarter. Jakari Brown drops back looking. Scrambles. Can he find someone? He ropes one downfield to Tate McGee. And that's the <laughs> first, first down of the night. But what a way to do it. Then later in the drive, Brown hands it off to Willie Williams. He's quickly wrapped up, but muscles his way in for the score. And it's a Vikings touchdown. They'll trail 17 17 7 at that point. But Lee County winners tonight, AP 24 21. A close one. Close game. The Valdosta Wildcats. 
in a big game themselves. The Cats welcoming in Colquitt County for the oldest high school football rivalry in South Georgia. This meeting number 107. Wow. How about some shenanigans on the opening kickoff? A short pooch kick. The pack having trouble with it. Valdosta would recover in the offense. They get to work. Joseph Gardner finding room up the middle, deep into pack territory, and the Cats not done. Caleb Robinson bullies his way in, and the Cats go in front 6 nothing. But the pack, they battle back. On the ensuing kickoff, Cameron Walker, he receives it, and he's got a lot of room to work. With blockers in front, past a few Cat defenders, and he gets his guys some good field position, and he's not done. Later, more pack. Nico Fan delivers a strike to Walker. He gets it. Colquitt jumps in front 7-6. to six. This one back and forth. Colquitt finishes on top 48-42. 3-0 Thomasville hosting Bainbridge. We'll start this one second quarter. Ricky Fulton is going to find a crease right up the middle. Breaks an arm tackle and he is in for the score. Thomasville takes a 7-3 lead. Dogs in the red zone again following their second block punt of the quarter. This time it's Malik Harper. We say his name like every week I every feel like. Week. Thomasville goes up 14 to 3 after the score then just before the half. This might be another play of the week we candidate. We got a bunch of them. Dayon Bowie picks up the low snap off the ground, regains his composure, <laughs> throws a strike to Zay okay. Crispin for the touchdown. Thomasville takes this one 28 to 10. Hey cheerleaders, take us to break. another life, I'll be a good drum player. Yeah, in, me in a, too. In another life. The sweet sounds of the Cairo Syrup Maker Band. Good job, guys. <laughs> the Makers in an interstate battle tonight, taking on Escambia out of Pensacola. Clear skies in Grady County tonight, and Cairo working fast on defense tonight. Second play of the game. Fumble is going to ensue when the quarterback scrambles out of the pocket. Got a little oh. butter on the hands, and the Syrup Makers, they'd recover, and they'd end up scoring a few plays later, so it's 7-0 early. Then second quarter off another turnover. Cairo with good field position, and they capitalize. Kevin Speed calls his own number. What an awesome name for a football player, Speed. too, by the way. Find some room <laughs> and scores. 14-0 early for the Syrup Makers. 21-7 Cairo would end up being your final big win for the Syrup Makers tonight. At the Jackets Nest, another game crossing state lines. Thomas County Central hosting Godby. TCC driving here in the first quarter. Pearson Taylor coughing up the rock. Godby recovers and maintains their 6-0 lead. Now in the second quarter, fourth and nine for the Jackets. Sam Brown rolling to his left, looking downfield and finds his guy. Tyler Floyd hauls it in. Beautiful toss. What a pass. That is a long conversion, too. A couple plays later, Brown gets a push into the end zone on the QB key. Keeper. Thomas County Central, big win over Godby, 20 to 12. At Mitchell County, the Eagles hosting Westover. And the home team driving early in the second quarter. Jeremiah Jackson looking downfield for Roderick Fowler. He makes the grab deep in Pat's territory, but Mitchell not done later in the drive. Jackson this time, he's going to go to the end zone. Why not? Let's get some points. Like, like Yvian, Norman goes up and gets it. Mitchell leads 22 to 8, and the Eagles defense shuts it down from there. Last time we had the update, they were up 30 to 8 in that one. 15 minutes down the road at Pelham High. The Hornets in a single A battle with Clinch County tonight. First quarter action. Hornets, they get on the board first. Latravian Hines scoring on the touchdown run from five yards out, and Pelham takes the 7 0 lead. But it is all Clinch County from there, folks. Out of the Wildcat, Amazi Williams jukes it bounces off a tackle for the seven yard touchdown. I think my ankle just Extra broke. point, no good. Panthers trail 6 to 7. Ahead to the second. Clinch County in the red zone once again, and again, they score. Khalil Jenkins keeps it for the 10 yard touchdown. Two point try, no good. Panthers lead 12 to 7, and they cruise tonight. Big win over Pelham, 40 to 14. Well, let's keep this train going, shall we? FAMU DRS on the road at Taylor County. Small town big dreams. Taylor County dominating the first half. Here's Jaquam Clayton taking it straight up the middle. 
falling at the one yard line. They'd score soon after, making it 14 0. Then it's Clayton again, back up the middle this there time. He He'll make it all the way into the end zone. Taylor County takes a 22 0 lead after a successful two point conversion. Baby Rattler now trying to make a comeback in the final seconds of the first half. Marion Wilson, the pass to Xavier Henderson. He'll be stopped just short oh, of the end zone. Taylor County guy. beats FAMU <laughs> DRS 38 to nothing. The Lafayette Hornets off to a dominating start on the year. They are 2-0 so far and have won their first two games. Get this, 64-13 and then 21-0. Yeah, they're doing all right. A good test on the road at Trenton. A tough environment to play in. But Mario Thomas, he loves that challenge. Watch this. The QB keeper up the middle goes for a huge gain and a touchdown to build some momentum for the Hornets. It's 7-zip in the first, and he wasn't done there. Thomas, again, keeping it, says, Get off me! Plows this is a man's his way game. That Get off defense. me! Lafayette wins big, 26 to 14. Another 1A battle. Bell at Branford. Opening series. We go. Kyson Johnson. He's a tough guy to bring down for a quarterback with that size in the Class 1A level. 7-0 Branford, and there goes that cannon. Forgot to remind the camera guy about that one. Then late first half, Bucks up 14-0 and about to be more. Bodie White punches it in. 21-0 Bucks. They'll win 40 to nothing in a monstrous shutout. Wakulla picking up a game this week to make up for last week's cancellation due to COVID at Newberry picking things up in the first. Newberry fumbles recovered by Sam and Bryson for the War Eagles and Wakulla goes on to get this win 36 to 17. Congrats to the War Eagles. Watch the show.